The Expos trying to avoid the bondsman. The other, and Ed Belfour, look at how deep he was in the net there. And that's something we saw from Belfour in game three. He was at the top of the crease the entire time. And on that goal, he's well back in the paint. And a big relief for Scott Fraser, who was the rookie of the month for both March and April. His first goal of the playoff. There'll be some celebrating tonight in Moncton. Basson's high shot is off the glass. It comes out across the line. Now it's Ruben firing it in. Joseph puts it up around the board that bounces away from Chambers. McCammon draws the assist at 10-13. We've got the scoring chances in this opening period. 7-1 for Dallas. They have outshot the orders 10-4, but it's a 1-1 game. Bookberger to the corner. Now to the other side. Hewitt is tied up. Opening period in a 1-1 tie with an update. Here's Ron. Don, thanks. As you mentioned, 2-0 is the final in Ottawa tonight. Here's the goal for Red Deer. Mark Tenorti, Red Deer right, scores the goal. It salts it away, and only the goalie with 36 saves. The Caps lead the series 3-1 with a 2-0 win tonight. Uh, Scott Fraser just banked one off the post. It's a good, quick shot. He used the defenseman as a screen. And look at Fraser. He uses the defenseman as a screen, lets it go, and look at where Ed Belfour is standing. Belfour's backing up, backing up, and he's back inside the paint. And that's the one thing we didn't see in game three. Belfour was always at the top of the crease, and Fraser just had enough room to get it by him. Back at the point, Donald gets set, the shot is blocked. Donald goes after it, lets it go, through traffic, loose, and then Belfour is able to cover up. Nainema has his pass intercepted by Carbono. Carbono gets to the line. Carbono shoots and the block saved by Joseph. As the two players going to the front of the net, Langenbrunner and Lind were both tied up. Ladies and gentlemen, now, Pete Carbono, you don't think of him anymore in his career as an offensive threat. But as a junior, he got more than 50 goals. He does have some talent around the net. He knows what to do when he gets in position. He knows how to get in position. He starts to play with the backhand pass to Langenbrunner and then just goes to the front of the net. Stick on the ice. Don't wait. Don't give the goaltender a chance to get set and just direct it at the net. You never know. And that's what he did. And in it went. Well, he's more noted for his uh, defensive role with the Dallas Stars. Selkie trophy winner in the past. One of the many leaders on this team, and one of the reasons they got Brian Scrudeman and Mike Keane was on the recommendation of Guy Carbonell. Well, in the first period, the uh, Edmonton Oilers have dominated in shots in the previous three, but tonight the Dallas Stars with an 11-6 advantage. is free for Madan who leaves it for Adams and his shot deflects off a stick and up into the crowd. There's another chance for Greg Adams and he tried to bring it back before he took that wrist shot and by the time he let it go there was traffic in front. But another good play by Mike Madano who seems to be a little more on his game. There's the pass from Madano and Adams doesn't have time to let it go. Madano was saying that there's a lot of additional pressure on him with Joe Neuendijk out of the lineup. He said it's a huge void having a 39 goal scorer missing, not only on the ice, but he said that uh, Neuendijk was such a factor in the dressing room as well. A former captain with the Calgary Flames. Matt Machuk from the point. His shot is blocked in front of the net. The puck loose and the orders are finally able to clear. Lindgren brings it up. Lindgren trying to work away from Adams. Fires it clear with a shot. The rebound, and it goes back to the net. Now you talked earlier about the owners deciding to shoot from everywhere if possible, and Mike Greer from a sharp angle twice has let it go. Here's the shot fired wide by Chambers. Puck comes back to center ice. Chambers dumps it in again. It bounces off. Hangle if he doesn't know where it is, and Joseph plays it around the board. Greer is bumped by Hull. There's an opportunity in the backhand by Holt that goes wide as Holt is able to walk out from the corner. He gets it again. In front. What a save by Joseph. Oh, a huge stop by Joseph on Jamie Wright as Holt set him up. And the Edmonton Oilers running around in their own zone and being 
bailed out again by their goaltender Curtis Joseph. And this time it was Jamie Wright standing all alone in front. Roman Hammerlick did, went down trying to draw a penalty, and when you do that, you better get the penalty. Now here's Hammerlick in the corner. He goes down trying to draw the penalty. Now he's out of the play. And that's why Jamie Wright is so wide open. Boris Mirnov has his man at the side. And Joseph's able to get the left shoulder out. He comes out, waits for Wright to shoot. And down he goes to make the save. And at the other end, Don, you talked about Mike Greer taking shots from everywhere. Here's the shot, and Rem Murray goes for the rebound. And he gets a piece of it, but Eddie Belfour is there to make the save. Scrubin faces off against Marchant. Marchant wins the draw. 6.46 remaining in the first. 1-1 one, one the score. Bob Basson. Back of the net. Trying to get it out front to Scrubin. He was tied up. Verbeek takes a hit there from Marchant. Fraser and Scrubin go in against the board. Verbeek steps into the breeze. Barahowski up along the board, but they can't get it out. Now Marchant gains control. He puts it to the wing to McCammond, and McCammond with Zuboff on him dumps it down the ice. Fraser steps into Sador. The puck comes free, but neither of the two Oilers, Marchant or McCammond, could get to it. Broken up at the line by Dallas. In the neutral zone, picked up by Lynn. Took off to the wing, and Carboneau is back. Carboneau will fire it in. Joseph having some problems controlling the puck back to the net. There's that kick of the stick by Joseph to move the puck on his forehand. And he was able to get it out of his own. Tony Herkins comes back for Edmonton. For Bookberger, he winds up. His shot goes off the leg wide. Centered by Hewer, but Bookberger was tied up and couldn't get to the loose puck in the low slot. 5.30 remaining in the first period. Carboneau and Fraser, the goal scorers. A long shoot in. Natural moves it around the boards. Rink wide pass for Keen. He sends it ahead for Medano. He pokes it around Garen. Medano goes after it. Medano having problems with Hamerlick is knocked down by the Edmonton defenseman. Miranoff in there fighting with Keen as it's stolen away by Medano. That the chuck from the point fires it just wide. Hewer gains control and he'll fire at the length of the ice. Belfour is forced to make the save, thus no icing. Matt Bichuk now plays it off the boards and out. Miranoff knocks it down. He gets it ahead to Waite. Waite gains the line. Waite still controlling. He shoots. It's blocked. Waite gets it back to Hammer. Takes a return pass in the corner. Up front for Smith. And what a save by Belfour. Now back to the net. It's Smith trying to slide it out front. It's knocked off his stick. And back comes Dallas. Long shot by Adams. That's held by Joseph, and Joseph leaves it back of the net for Garrett. 422 left in the first period. Some good end-to-end -end action. 13-10. The shots on goal favoring Dallas. After a slow start, the Oilers have come to life. Now it's Garrett in across the line. He's checked. Back comes Hogue. Hogue going wide. He tried to wind up on Barahowski. Takes it back of the net. Still controlling it. Feeds the point. Ludwig with a shot. It's blocked. Gets it again. Another shot kicked out by Joker. White back of the net. Hogue tied up by Barahowski. Whipped around the boards and chopped down the ice and out of play by Smith. 1-1 the score. 3.46 left in the first. What a great hockey. Behind his net. Plays it around the boards. White takes a hit, but it's picked up by Marshall. Marshall gets it over to Benoit Hogue, the overtime hero in game three. To the front of the net, and it's steered to the corner by Nineman. Now along the board, Donna flips it out, knocked down by Zuba. 32 seconds remaining, and as they attempt to shoot it in, it goes into the Edmonton bench, and goaltender Bob Essens of the backup have to react quickly. <laughs> Had his hands up, still with the glove on. I don't think he caught it, but in self-defense, both hands up. Look at the teams who have lost that overtime key pivotal third game. It is so disappointing, but of those teams, look at the ones who have won the Stanley Cup. A couple of those teams in that group. And I really think that this, these two teams, it didn't matter.
matter so much. It, this is a key game for the Edmonton Oilers. They cannot afford to go down 3-1. They came back 3-1 against Colorado, but this is a different team. Oh, what a good play by Hamillon as he broke up that two-on-one. Langenbrunner and Lynn were coming in. Langenbrunner puts it high to the corner in the dying seconds of the period. And the Oilers, with the jump that the Dallas Stars had to start this game, I'm sure will be quite happy to go to the dressing room in a 1-1 tie. And that's the way it's going to finish. Dean Carboneau and Scott Fraser, the goal scorers in the opening period here at the Edmonton Coliseum. Coach's Corner with Don Cherry. Brought to you by Monroe Sensatrack. Making the road a safer place. rough roads if you ever need to stop quickly consider replacing your worn shock absorbers it can be like getting an extra three meters of road when you need it most replace your worn shocks with new monroe sensatrack now with safe tech unlike worn shocks sensatrack helps hold your tire to the road tests show you can stop an average of three meters sooner and that can make a big difference monroe sensatrack making the road a safer place Slowage. This is quite the achievement for you because you've been autumn about his Smokey the Bandit hat, and I see he's made the change. Unless I told him he looked absolutely ridiculous, and he looked like American. Well, down not the ridiculous. You didn't look like ridiculous. It. He looked like one of those guys down south, those good old boys. Now he looks like a good Canadian um, OPP RCMP guy. Looks great. Ontario Receive. Provincial Police here Watch to look it. at uh, Lyndon from the. National anthem. Doesn't early this he look evening. good? Look at him, boy! What a guy! You go to war with this guy, wouldn't you? Watch him give a little wink at the end. <laughs> I love it. Still looks like Smokey the Bandit there. Oh, he does not. That's good. Don't say that. Well, I mean, just the wink, the friendly wink of oh, Smokey yeah, the Bear. Right, let's go. Same thing. I love it. Okay, here we go. This is in the penalty box. Chris Simon. Get Let a me set excited. it up. Let me set it up. Let me set it up. Now, Simon was told by Wilson. Listen, listen. If somebody picks on a little guy, you go over and straighten him out. And that's all Simon was doing, just going over and pushing. They get a big smudge, and he. And that's why we're having a tough time. We cannot protect our stars like Korea's out, Lafontaine's out. Before we used to remember Bossy and Gretzky, but anyhow, Simon was over and he gets a penalty. But looks what happens within the penalty box. Watch this here, Hunter. He's such a great leader. He was supposed to be the guy, you know, up and everything. But watch what he does. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Isn't he something? <laughs> He's going to tell him again, stop it. And he does it after again. That's what you call a leader. That's pretty good. I love stuff like that. Chris is mad at the little camera. You know, they mount those little cameras oh, in the yeah. family box looking up at him, and he didn't like it. So well, I like uh, Dale Hunter. What a guy. All right. Let's get to uh, action around the NHL last night. Yes. You're sitting home watching the Buffalo watching Sabres it. beat Montreal in OT. You know, I'm telling you, you, you got to be honest here. Let's go. Let's be honest about Hasek. You know, I, I, you're not my cup of tea sometimes, but they get outshot 18-3 to in the third period, 10-2, to I think it was, in the first OT, and they win the game, and they, you know, they're all excited. It was the goaltenders that did it. And I'm going to tell you, Buffalo, you know who they remind me of? They remind me of the 93 Montreal Canadiens. They're riding a hot goaltender. They sit back and wait. They wait for a power play, but they sit back and wait. They don't get caught, and they're playing it smart. Now, you could say it's Hasek, and it is, but they're playing it smart. And there are upsets around them, like Absolutely. New Jersey and all that. Absolutely. Everything's walking it. Yeah, just like Pat Roy did at that time. Uh, what were you going to say? Uh, who scored the goal? Uh, Michael Pekka, you're excited well, about Well, I was going to say about Michael Pekka. Here's a guy that couldn't play for Team Canada. And let's see, somebody else. I think Al McKinnis got two. Uh, Turner Stevenson, my buddy, got two. Shanahan got the winner. Pekka got the winner. McCarty. Now, what do those guys all have in all common? Canadian. So they had a good night, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Imagine unskilled people like us. But go ahead. I want to show your clips? Uh, you have this, sort of the same clip twice, I think. What? Oh, about, oh, oh, yeah. okay, when I, remember the last time here I wanted to tell you, you're leading me through pretty good here, I get going. Now, I told, what I said at the start, now watch what I said, and I'll explain to you as Buddha Debt what he said going into overtime. Now watch this. One guy back, always have the one guy back. Yeah, I think we stay back too much, and uh, you now we got to get the forecheck going and make sure we got a third guy. 
Now, what he's saying there, in, in the terms, of like uh, my terms and his terms, what he was saying, he was pulling back too much. What he meant was two guys go in, they got a four check, and keep going. And I said one guy back, he said one guy high. That's what the, it's the same thing. And he must have been listening to the coach's corner before. And then remember what I said afterwards? Do you want, are we going to show it the goal first or show it what I said afterwards? What, uh, which one? The Odette goal? No, oh, no, not the Adet goal. The one up the middle there. Oh, okay. the yeah, now you're going to show on. this clip as it relates to the Edmonton yes. series. Now, I what's see. the Edmonton series coming up? What I said in the same little Here's frame right there. Said. When we Go went ahead. in all the time, when I come in, you're a little tired now. Guys are a little tired. You can't blitz three guys. I always said one guy back. Always have the one guy back. And defenseman, for heaven's sakes, don't go up the middle. Here it is. Kind of burying him, right? Glenn Sater really went to bat for him. You see what Glenn said? I don't he know says Wayne said. Gretzky had the same thing happen to him in the Los Angeles uh, 1982. Yeah. yeah, well, Gretzky gets 92 goals a year. This guy didn't. Scored the winner right in Game 7 last night. All right, watch this here. Right up the middle and in the net. He goes up the boards, kids, and there's no problem. If you listen to me, and the reason I do that, not only to make myself look good, it's when you people watch out there, I got credibility. No wonder I was coached here in the American Hockey League, coached here in the National Hockey League, because I know what I'm talking about. I'll give you this, uh, too. Uh, Eddie Belfour, I spoke to him yesterday in the interview, and his dad's a huge fan of yours. Henry's watching in Carmen, Manitoba yes, right now. and has yes. got his picture up when he watches the games. Good. Well, he knows class, too. Yes, and we exactly. got some more. Come on, we got to go St. Louis, Detroit. Absolutely. Roll. All right. I'm now just watch, sitting here. I'm going to sit here. Now, wait a minute. Now, watch McKinnis wrap this one in. Now, you're going to say, Wango, we're going to see some. He does this to score. He does not put it on net. See the other guys not go offside. They let him shoot. He does this. Now, watch it skips for Osgood. Watch it just skip a little. That's a tough. I mean, I think he should have been out a little more when he saw it, but that's a tough one. I think you see it just skip here a little right now. And he did the same thing, and he does it near the end of the game all the time. Watch how he does Well, that's, you should have seen Scotty. Now watch this on Potvin. He does the same thing on Potvin. He puts it on net, kids. Put it on net, bounce it. See this here one? It's a little different, but see how it bounces too? You practice that, and he does it all the time. I'll tell you, Detroit's on a roll too. They come back, Shanahan. I'm, I'm starting to pump Shanahan for the most valuable player of, of the year right now, coming in the playoffs. Him and Hasek and Stevie Eiserman playing the best hockey he ever did in his career. Wish we had more time to talk about Bobby Clark's remarks, uh, but we don't. We'll save that for Good. next time around. Right. Uh, in the case of Chris Osgood, all's well that ends well. This jacket doesn't make it, does it? Oh, I think it looks pretty no, good. I don't like Better it. Better with a hat. One no, of those smoky bandit hats. Way to go, Linda. Corner on Wilson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Coach's Corner on CBC. Brought to you by Monroe Center Track. Water play yet, so maybe we'll get a couple in the th second and third. Tony, good luck in second. Thank you very much. Second period action up next from the Edmonton Coliseum, the Stars and Oilers. At Ford, we're working on a new fuel cell with Canada's Ballard Power System. Now for the Dallas Stars. Zubas. Whips it in. Joseph leaves it in the corner for Hammerlick. He puts it high on the glass, and it's deflected out of play. I mean, you look at this Dallas Star team, and naturally you would look at Mike Medano as being the number one guy. And he would, in anybody's opinion, be your star. Mike Keen plays with Medano, and you look at their points, and they really had problems. Three points for Mike Medano, all in the same game, all in game one. And you go right down the list, Pat Verbeek is really having problems, and they're trying to get Pat Verbeek going, playing him on the power play. Greg Adams, the same thing, although Adams had a couple chances in game three. But the owners have done a good job on Medano, much like they did on Peter Forsberg at the end of the Colorado series. They haven't given him a whole lot of room to get going. They've been in his space, haven't let him have control. Medano did not have a shot in the first two games of the playoffs. He had two shots in game three. Medano has it in the corner. Adams in the slot, have it deflected away from him. Now it's Medano back at the net. Adams uncovered, but now he has a man on him. To the point for Sador, over to Zuba. Zuba to the side of the net for Beek shoots. It's blocked in front of the net. Murray flips it, not out. 
And then it is knocked up with a persistent effort by Ren Murray. He goes to the bench and Kelly Bookberger comes on. Madano trying to set something up. 20 seconds left in this two-man advantage. Zuboff at the point. Over to Sador. Sador at the side of the net in front for Adams. He's checked. They bang away. It goes loose into the corner. Back to Zuboff. Zuboff to Sador. Sador at the side of the net. Adams with a shot. Madano trying to put it up high. He's blocked. And then Adams puts it high on the glass. One man down now for the orders. Here's Sador. The beat. Looking back to the slot area. It's intercepted and put down the ice by Bookberger. Two great saves by Curtis Joseph. The biggest part of your penalty killing has to be your goaltender. And Joseph coming through again. He's now been tested 21 times. Hold with some speed. Going hard to the net. Collision in front of the net. And the order's clear. Ten seconds remaining in the power play. Boy, this has really energized the crowd. The work of the penalty killing unit here in the second period in a 1-1 tie. Racing into the corner is Hogue, but the Greens got there first. The Oilers clear. They're back at full strength. Lynn comes in, shoots, saves the rebound. It's loose, and Carbono couldn't get to it. Another penalty coming up. Another power play for Dallas. Langenberger winds up, saves. Cut loose at the side of the net. and ends up drawing the penalty called by Paul Dvorsky, a holding penalty. And the Oilers penalty killers must be tired now. They're right back at it. Cujo watches, watches, and then stacks the pads. And Adams slips up the second rebound, up and over the crossbar. Benoit Hogue has played very well, goes around Yanni Ninema, crashes the net. But again, Curtis Joseph right there. Sador throws it to the net, the save by Joseph. Adams digs it out. Adams centers. Medano back to Sador. Sador puts it behind the net for Adams. Keane goes to the front of the net. Pass does not get through. Broken up by Hammerlick. He's having a strong game. Well, there is an example. Hammerlick right on Mike Medano. He followed him all the way out to the blue line to make sure Medano wasn't the trigger man. Medano trying to set it up. His pass is intercepted. Sador gets it across to Zuba. 119 remaining on this power play. Adams had problems handling it at the line. Now he flips it in, but Miranoff is there. He takes his time and fires it. Blink -blink. Edmonton changing on the penalty killing unit. They killed off 20 consecutive Dallas power plays in this series. Marchant picks it up and he'll play it off the stick and down the ice. 49 seconds left in the power play. On their last power play, the Stars had five shots and they were all quality scoring opportunity. Verbeek plays it to the wing. Dallas got there. Lindgren is tied up as he tries to move it. Four players in there fighting to get it free. It comes loose back at the point. Zuboff for Sador. Sador with a shot, and it's held by Joseph with 23 seconds left in this power play. Well, the last power play was a five on three. The Stars are having some problems now. The good aggressive play of the Edmonton Oilers penalty killers. And that long shot by Daryl Sador, no problem for Curtis Joseph. Saw it all the way. Hey, look at Mike Medano and how the Oilers have keyed on him. Well, when Joe Newendike's in the lineup, you can't key on Medano. And that makes this team so much more dangerous. 39 goals for Newendike. And the knee injury in game one, Ryan Marchman hit. And he is so good in front of the net. They can use Darian Hatcher as a screen in front of the net, but Hatcher doesn't can't tip the puck like Newendike. He can't read plays like Newendike, and he can't make plays like Joe Newendike. Newendike is the big boy, but they also miss Yerry Lettinen. He had 23 goals, so the two of them combined. 62 goals for the Dallas Stars during the regular season. Langenbrunner tried to work into the slot. And Langenbrunner is hurt. He goes down. He got tangled up 
for the couple of players. There was no penalty call, or at least no initial indication from Dvorsky. Well, Paul Dvorsky was not making any penalty call, and unless the linesman come over and help him out. And this was Langenbrunner cutting across in the middle. And as you said, Don, he made contact with a couple of the Edmonton Oilers. Now here's Langenbrunner, he comes up the side. He's still watching the puck, cuts across the middle, takes a couple of whacks there, but that's where he's hurt. And it looks to me like he's just winded. He's cutting across with his head down, and he looks like he's going to be all right. Now let's join Steve Armitage. Thank you, Don. I'm with League Commissioner Gary Bevan. Uh, Gary, you had a little uh, get-together with uh, the new owners of the Oilers today. Must have been a little intimidating being in the same room with 17 owners of the same team. Actually, it's more than 17 by a multiple, but uh, no, it was nice. They were having a little reception, and I had an opportunity to meet some of the owners who I hadn't met and to tell them, frankly, how grateful we are that they stepped up because we're delighted about the uh, shape of the Edmonton Oilers. Nice to see Edmonton on solid financial. Brown. Well, they, they've got a, an ownership group for the future, uh, and in terms of the league's response, we got a little creative with them in terms of an ownership structure, and it's because we believe that the Oilers belong in Edmonton. Peter Pockington did a great job over the last two decades, uh, but for a lot of reasons, a change had to come, and this group stepped up, and we couldn't be happier. Gary, we've heard that uh, Bill Davidson the owner of the Vipers and Pistons might be interested in buying the Tampa Bay Lightning. Can you shed any light on that? I never like to fuel speculation. Uh, there are a number of groups now that are looking quite actively at Tampa Bay. Uh, that's another situation where we need new ownership, and our hope is in the not-too-distant future an appropriate owner will step forward. Gary, thank you very much for doing this. Great to be here. Guys, back to you. Well, the commissioner is seeing quite a hockey game, and he just saw Richard Matvichuk head off to the penalty box. So the Edmonton Oilers, after surviving three consecutive penalties, now get an opportunity to put their power play to work. Well, here's what we were talking about, Don. When you feel the stick in there, that was just a little wee tug. Boris Mirnov felt the stick of Matvichuk. Down he went. And after you've taken three in a row, you know the referee's going to be looking. Matvichuk takes the interference penalty. No shots on the last power play as Ken Hitchcock's team did a pretty good job of shutting down the Edmonton Oilers, not giving them a chance to set up in the Dallas zone. And Guy Carboneau wins the faceoff, but the Oilers will get to it. Ninema at the point. Puts it in for Garen. Garen looking for Herkus. Herkus is tied up along the board. Now Garen gets tied up by Sean Chambers. Hatcher trying to dig the puck out. Loose at the side of the net. Still nobody really able to gain control. Finally, Carbono gets it, and he very calmly flips it over to Sador, who fires up the length of the ice. Nenema leads the attack. And it's offside at the line. Tony Herkus and Zuboff got tangled up. And Paul Dvorsky is looking at Zubov. Zubov wanted an interference penalty, but Zubov brought Herkus in over the blue line. Eddie Belfour has been the target. The Oilers have been trying to get him off his game, but he's been emotionally level. And for Eddie, it's a struggle because he is a fiery guy. And in the San Jose series, Owen Nolan there takes a run at him. They were all over Ed Belfour trying to get him off his game. But it didn't work. Eddie Belfour was the main reason that the Dallas Stars beat the Sharks in six. I believe things like that happened to Eddie Belfour 13 times during the series with the San Jose Sharks. They really only got him off his game once. That's when he was ejected late in the game and the issue already decided. At the line, Ninema blocks the clear. He can't do anything but try and throw it to the corner. Ninema gets it again. Garen. Can't get a shot away. Back to Nienema. Nienema moves it across. Hammerlick at the point. Now Nienema getting set. Nienema shoots. Knocked down in front. Herkus back to Nienema. Over to the other side for Hammerlick. Hammerlick plays it back of the net for Wade. Here's Nienema with the shot. Save and Garen is tied up in front of the net. Nienema came racing in from the point. Now Hammerlick over to Herkus. Back to Hammerlick. Hammerlick shoots. It hits Garen in front of the net. Zubak trying to clear, and he succeeds. 
Well, there was the play the Oilers want. Get Doug Wait behind the net. Let him decide where the puck's going to go. 16 seconds remaining in the power play. He goes into Fraser. Fraser whips it around for McCammon. Back to the point for Barahowski. McCammon back to Barahowski again. Over to the other side. Miradoff couldn't shoot. Barahowski to Miradoff. He shoots. Saved by Balfour. And he had Fraser standing right there with Hatcher just as the penalty expires. 11.06 remaining in a 1-1 second period tie. way beyond peanut butter and chocolate. Grab a Reese. The taste that's so much more. Passing cars out there all day. And with Vassar in the lead, we'll have more after this. It's Honda's checkered flag event. Right now, buy any of our sporty new Civics and get 4.8% financing. Hatchback, sedan, or coupe. Or lease the spacious new Accord from just $268 a month. See your Honda dealer now. We're back. Jimmy wants to know how long the checkered flag event is on. Uh, tell him he better hurry. The Sounds of Summer on CBC Sports. The Oilers' best scoring chance on their power play was created by Doug Waite behind the net. He reads the play so well. Yanni Nienema jumps into an open space. There's the pass, and Ed Belfour quick to react. 2 nothing, Washington over Ottawa tonight to take a 3-1 lead in that series with it moving back to Washington Friday. I wonder how many people took Sergei Gonchar in their playoff pool. I wonder how many people took any members of the Washington Capitals in their playoff pool. Back of the net for Ludwig. Ludwig flips it up along the boards. Lindgren gets turned around in the corner. Greer trying to move it against Scrutman. He stays with it. Now leaves it for Lindgren. Lindgren trying to get out front. Lindgren shoots! Oh, that went wide. He was able to move out front and he got a shot away. Penalty coming up. Chambers knocked down. Murray the puck loose at the side of the net. And another Edmonton power play. Now get a 28-point summer checkup, plus oil, lube, and filter, tire rotation, and a free jug of washer fluid. All for just $29.95. Only at Canadian Tire. Well, Pat Verbeek's on the ice. He tried to create some excitement. Sean Chambers was getting the original penalty for flattening Matt Lindgren. And I don't know whether Paul Dvorsky is going to find anybody else to go off with him. Well, there was some pushing and shoving after the penalty had been called. Well, there's the hit on, it's on Rem Murray. The Chambers hit from behind on Murray. And away from the play, away from the puck, and that's why Chambers goes up for 40. Well, the next three nights are going to be busy. Hockey Night in Canada will bring you Montreal and Buffalo tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern Time, game four of that series, with the Sabres leading three games to nil. And then on Friday, it will be the Senators and the Capitals, and the Capitals have the 3-1 series lead. That game coming to you from Washington. And on Saturday night, it will be game five of the Oilers and the Stars from Reunion Arena in Dallas, beginning at 7 Eastern Time with the pre-game show. That's the Oilers fans, and the weather's so good, you don't have to wear a shirt to the Coliseum here. Yes, it has been very warm in the Alberta capital. And the fans in Edmonton have really dressed up for these playoff encounters, first with the Colorado Avalanche and now with the Dallas Stars. On the power play, Todd Marchant flips it to the corner. He races in after it. Marchant is able to get there and cause some confusion. It's played back to the point. Barahowski to the other side for Miranov. Back to Barahowski. 
Marahowski for Marchand. Marchand looks to the side of the net. Now the point is fed. Marahowski had problems handling it. Mirnoff over for McCammon. He couldn't handle the pass. And it's picked up by Medano. And very coolly, he takes it out the center ice. He avoids the check. He puts on the brakes. Now plays it back into the center ice area to kill some time before it's slipped in. Mirnoff gets away from Carbonell. Feeds it in for Fraser. Fraser stops. Tries to throw it into the slot. It's intercepted by the Stars. They can't clear. Fraser with another chance. Wake tries to center. It bounces high. And it's grabbed by Balfour. The Dallas Stars trying to be more physical on the Edmonton Oilers in front of the net. Darian Hatcher with a couple of big hits. Dean McCammon trying to go to the net. A couple of miscues. A nice pass to Dean McCammon. It was a hard pass. He couldn't handle it. Here's Darian Hatcher. Good solid hit on Dean McCammon. Flattens him. Here's another look at it. Face to face. Now that's a good forearm hit. Nothing wrong with that body check from Darian Hatcher. That's the way they like him to play every shift, and he hasn't been playing that way. He's now going to stall. He has some stick problems. If one of these teams caught fired on, just think of the last three games, how they could have been decided on the power play very early in the game, but neither team can get their power play going. And I think you have to give credit to the Edmonton penalty killers because during the regular season, Dallas had the number one power play in the league. They scored on their first power play chance. They've been shut out since. Nenema tried to push it across. It was intercepted by Sador. Oh, Carbono was breaking up the middle. Now Joseph gets himself in trouble back of the net, but Nenema comes back to help out. Pushes it in. Goes in after it. Sador will get there. He can't clear. Garen runs into Smith. Smith goes down and takes more punishment from Sador. Hammerman falls on top of the puck. Now it comes free. Nienema whips it across to Hammerman. Back to Nienema. Nienema whips it over to Hammerman. Back to Nienema. He shoots. It's blocked. Back to Hammerman. Carbono is out there to block it. Here's the fake by Nienema. He gets Carbono down. Shoots and that's blocked. The door dropped in front of it. Nenema shoots. That goes wide. Picked up in the corner by Waite. He's checked there by Carbono. And the Dallas Stars are back at full strength. In the corner, Smith for Waite. Waite looking to the front of the net. Now gets it to Nenema. Nenema moves into the slot. He shoots. Belfort got a piece of it. He had traffic in front of him. And to relieve the pressure, Chambers will put it high off the glass and down the ice. And this will be icing against Dallas with 7.48 remaining in period two. Getting ready for the long weekend can be an amazing amount of work. But we'll make it easy with Canadian Tire's long weekend sale. You'll save on everything you're looking for. Carol Sador and Bill Guerin, and now they're still yapping at each other in the penalty box. A little scrum after the whistle, and the Dallas Stars are trying to get Doug Waite off the ice, and I don't blame them. There's Bill Guerin trying to hit Daryl Sador, but he hits Ryan Smith instead. Here comes Guerin, pushed by Hatcher. Now he's got Sador lined up, but Sador saw him, squeezed out of the way, and Guerin ends up hitting Ryan Smith. Well, unsportsmanlike conduct for Guerin and Sador at 12-12, so four on four hockey for the next two minutes, firing further penalties. 16, the shots on goal favoring the Dallas Stars to this point of the game. I think Ken Hitchcock will take that trade off. Bill Guerin has played very well, and Daryl Sador has too, but Daryl Sador is the fifth or sixth defenseman on this team, and Bill Guerin is the top line right winger. Medano puts the puck back to the net for Chambers. Chambers on the wing for Medano. He has Adams with him. The battle shoots it high off the glass behind Joseph. Bernard plays it to the corner for Marchand. He chops it up. Lindgren after Chambers. He bumps him. Zuboff is checked, but Marchand can't carry on. 
Sanders got to the line, got turned around, right out to center, and back after it goes Zubak. Chambers has Madano streaking down the right side. Madano trying to go wide, throws it into the slot, and Chambers couldn't get a shot away. Now Zubak has it. He gets tangled up and turned around by Greer. Lead pass for Marchand just off the end of the day. 105 remaining in this four-on-four four situation as Madano comes in again. He looks for some help. Tried to throw it out front, broken up by Hammerlock. Greer. Working down the left side, trying to go around Matt the Chuck. Goes after the puck. Still has it. Back to Nenema. Nenema couldn't get a shot away. Now Nenema gets it again. Tried to flip it to the other point, but Dallas wasn't in position. 6.28 remaining in the period. Here's Murray up the middle. A high shot steered to the corner by Belfort. Puck comes back to the line. Dallas controls it for Edmonton. Murray working along the board. Matt the Chuck. All over him. Here's a breakaway pass for Hope going in. Scores! Benoit Hogue, the overtime hero in game three, takes the breakaway pass to make it 2-1 Dallas. Well, four-on-four four hockey as a defenseman, you have to be aware of what's going on in behind you. And here's Benoit Hogan. Yanni Nienema steps up. And Darian Hatcher spots him. And as soon as Nienema steps up, Hogue left. And look at Hogue. He's trying to go high glove side. He doesn't get it as high as he wants. Look at that nice backhand pass by Hatcher. And Hogue goes in. He's got his head up all the way. He's trying to go high glove side. Doesn't get it as high as he wants. It's off Curtis Joseph's glove. And that's why Joseph was so upset. He thought he should have had it. It was off his glove and just trickled in. Hatcher draws the assist. As Hogue gets his third of the playoffs and second in as many games. Now it's Zubak throwing it rink wide and it's deflected out to center. High 50 remaining in the second period. Penalized players back on the ice. Sador takes a hit from McCammond along the board. Joseph leads the back of the net for Darahowski. Lind is after him. Pass is too far for McCammon, and Hatcher goes back after him. He can't clear. Wait goes to the corner, throws it out front. McCammon for Garen, he had his stick with it. McCammon battling along the boards with Struben. The Dallas center manages to get it out for Basson. He dumps it to the corner. Joseph whips it around the board. Scrubman cuts it off. Verbeek back to the net. Battling with Miranov. Now Scrubman. Here's it for Basson. Basson will dump it back in behind the goal. 4.54 remaining in the second period. Benoit holds go-ahead goal, giving the Stars a 2-1 lead. Ludwig's long shot doesn't miss by much. The order is having all sorts of problems with this line, but the pressure is relieved as Scribman sees it back to the line and puts it outside the line. Big hit over on the far side on Verbeek as he had two orders run into it. Matt Machuk now in his own zone. Tried to move it ahead. And Hogue was knocked down as he attempted to get out. Wait to the attack. Wait gets it over on the wing. Garen back to Bookberger. And his shot is blocked before it gets to the net. Hatcher got in front of it. Here comes Hogue with Marshall. Hogue moving in for Marshall. And Marshall couldn't get his shot away. Furious action here in the second period. Hogue back to the line. Over to the other side for Ludwig. Ludwig shot. Bounces off a stick to the front of the net. And the Oilers finally gain control with Herkus bringing it up ice. Herkus over to Bookberger. He shoots. It's blocked by Ludwig, and it winds up underneath the Dallas defenseman. Three forty-three. The time remaining in the second. Cut pinched in, and here he goes. Hogue is off to the races, and there's no way Nenema is going to catch him. Head up play. And he's fortunate to get it by Joseph, but Nenema has to recognize danger. He didn't, and got burned. The second time in two games that Nenema has been victimized by Benoit Ho. 
Loose puck hits the post, and Medano with Joseph out of position had it bounce off her body. Joseph again got caught in the corner, couldn't get back into the net, and the Dallas Stars came close to making it a 3-1 game. Keane tries to work around Miranoff, then takes a hit from Greer. Medano and Adams back of the net with Hamerlick and Miranoff trying to move it. Going to be a penalty. Miranoff knocked Medano down. Took the feet out from under him. 249 left in the second and another Dallas power play upcoming. And he picked up along the boards by the Oilers, but Marchand had it taken away by Langenbrunner. Langenbrunner went to the front of the net, but in the corner, Hold could not get it to him. Now it's Sador at the point. Over to Zuba. Zuba, a long shot, knocked down the rebound. And it's put down the ice. 104 remaining on this power play. Chambers gets to the line. Tried to feed it in for Keane too far. Barahowski gets taken in against the board by Keane. Back to the point. Zuboff winds up. Pad save and the rebound is off wide. Picked up by Marchand. And Marchand will clear. On the power play tonight, the Dallas Stars have eight total shots. But they have yet to score a goal with the man advantage. Including a two-man advantage for 111. Here's the shot fired wide by Adams. Keen gains control for Adams and it hit a body and was flipped down the ice by Edmonton. 20 seconds remaining in the power play. Good job by Mike Medano to strip Kelly Bookberger of the puck. Almost ended up with a good scoring chance for Greg Adams. Chambers for Bassett. Bassett trying to go in deep, taken in against the board by Hamerlick. He won't be able to clear. With the cross by Chambers for Zuboff for Struglin. Struglin centered the traffic in front of the net. Edmonton back at full strength. Basson behind the goal trying to dig it out. Basson for Struglin. He attempted to one time and it was blocked by Bookberger and he cleared. And this is going to be icing against Edmonton with 33 seconds remaining in the second. Well, Curtis Joseph has calmed down after the Benoit Ho goal, but the rest of the team, Don, I don't think has. The Oilers rattled by that second goal, and Curtis Joseph is keeping his team in. That last penalty kill, three good saves. Now here's another good play by Benoit Hogue to set up Jamie Langenbrunner. Bobby Dallas is down, and Curtis Joseph picked it up after it went by Dallas to make the save. Here's another look at it. Dallas goes down, and Cujo gets it. It's off the inside of his blocker and stays away. He has been very good. And you let in a breakaway like the Hogue thing, and even though you think you played it pretty well, think maybe you should have it. When the guy's got that much time, it's like a penalty shot. Well, the Stars progressively in each game as this series has moved along have gone from 14 to 15 to 28 shots, and tonight they've got 31 with still better than a period to go. The Stars talked about coming out with more jump early, and they have definitely had that. McCammon cross ice for Garrett, and he couldn't get a stick on it. 16 seconds remaining. Lynn goes into the corner after it. Joseph gets there. Up along the board, Garen settles it down and uh, plays it back the other way. And Bobby Dallas, I think, is going to get a penalty here on Jamie Langenbrunner, and he doesn't like the call one little bit. And Ron Lowe's not going to like this call one little bit. Now here comes Bobby Dallas on Jamie Langenbrunner. A little pushing and shoving. Sticks are high, sticks are high. And Dallas gives him that little extra chop. And we've talked about it all throughout this series. You remember the Darian Hatcher roughing penalty that was very costly for Dallas. Bobby Dallas takes one there. They both had their sticks up. You can't get that little extra retaliation in. It's playoff time. Discipline has been a key word in both camps in this playoff series and I think Ron Lowe might be the first to admit that his team has taken some undisciplined penalties in this 
fourth game at the Edmonton Coliseum. Twelve shots on goal. That includes a two-man advantage for more than a minute for the Dallas Stars. Carboneau will try and get this draw over to Medano. at the edge of the circle. Medano feeds the point. Zuboff back to Medano. His shot towards the net blocked by Miranoff. And this period is going to end with the Dallas Stars in front by a goal. Benoit Hogue's breakaway goal putting Dallas in front. Many people around the Oilers say they don't start to really play their game until they feel the shot away anyway. And then Marchand holds on to the stick, goes down trying to draw the penalty, but Paul Dvorsky wouldn't make the call. Well, Marchand was the overtime hero last year in Game 7 for the Edmonton Oilers in the first round against the Dallas Stars. Hatcher pinned against the boards by Greer, but still manages to move it. Ninema moves in. Penalty coming up against Dallas. Nienema looks to the net, shoots it, it's blocked before it gets there. And Nienema is checked and the whistle goes. A power play for Edmonton with 16-10 left in the third period. Back to the net. The door is going to get there and he'll clear. Edmonton just one power play goal and 18 chances. That was five on three with Doug Waite. Here's Smith with a shot. He goes after the rebound. Can't get there in time. Waite lays it back to Miranoff. Over to Hammerle to Miranoff. Miranoff in for Waite. A lot of traffic in front of the net. They can't get the shot through, but Garen fires it wide as he was on the edge of the circle. But Garen got good wood on that one, Don, but he just missed the net. And Eddie Belfour beat him. But from the point, the Oilers are having difficulty in getting their shots through. And that was a good power play setup for the Edmonton Oilers. They're going to be called for icing as they shot this one in before they got to the red line. On round one, Bill Guerin hits this one in instead of just wide. And that's the difference. When you're hot, that six inches goes inside the post instead of outside the post. Tony Herkus now comes out on the power play to take the face off. Wade and McCammond also out there. Nienema brings it up ice. Pass just beyond the reach of Scott Fraser. Goes back after. He and Wade are going to man the point. Puck flipped over the boards and dumped down the ice. Bit of a change in power play strategy for the Oilers. Now you're talking about their shooting. They have to keep the puck away from Ed Belfort. He's a good puck in. Here's McCammon. He goes wide. But Hatcher is all over him. The puck loose in the corner, and Sador sees some room, and he brings it up ice. He's got Carboneau with him. Sador tried to go through, and Joseph holds the puck, and Sador was driving in, and then was taken in against the end board. End boards. And Paul Dvorsky's making the call on Daryl Sador. Curtis Joseph had that puck, complete control, and Sador just kept on carrying into the goaltender. Long shoot in. Sidor's trying to split the defense. Joseph's got it. The whistle. Marinoff flips it in high. A race to the corner. Murray gets to it. Murray tries to get it to Greer. Gets it again. Now here's a shot by Lindgren, and that is high and wide. Zubov tries to clear. Knocked down by Lindgren. He can't get a stick on it, and it's not to center ice. It to Greer. Greer flips it in, goes to the bench in the chain. Marchand in forechecking. He bumps into Balfour. Nothing serious there. 
Now he knocks down Matvichuk. The puck loose in the neutral zone. Marchand comes back to steal. Hewitt fires it in. Racing in after it is Matvichuk. Flipberger is after him. Those two go hard into the end board. Both go down. Flip back down the ice and Dallas in retreat. Picks it up for Edmonton. Nail on the board for Marchand. He can't do anything with it. Dallas looks it across for Hewitt. He's set by Patrick. 10.49 remaining in the third. By a rink wide where Nenema has it. Nenema for Donald. Back to Nenema. He brings it up ice. Takes his time as he comes to center as the Oilers are in the process of making a change. Now it's DeVries dumping it in. Right off the glass and down the ice. And this is going to be icing against Dallas as we near the midpoint of the third period with the Stars clinging to the one goal advantage. All aboard! Your chance to rediscover Canada with Via Rail is back! At your neighborhood, Home Hardware. And Home Building Center. This year, it's bigger and better. Twenty couples will win the all-inclusive cross-Canada luxury trip of a lifetime. Then you'll take a private train. From Chris Rupert all the way to Halifax. Come to Home Hardware for your chance to rediscover Canada with Via Rail. But hurry, your private train is waiting. To get your free Rediscover Canada card, call now. Love is all that I can give to you. Love. Tangled up with that loose helmet. Finally decided to try and come out the other way. And with some speed, he's working his way in. Then is checked by Sador. The two go in against the board. Greer trying to get it free. Back after it to pick it up is Adams, and he will clear. 850 remaining in the third period. 2-1, the Dallas Stars lead. Adams puts it back in. Hammer back there after it. Along the boards for Greer. He's tied up by Adams. Hammerlin. Throws it up the middle. Nobody in position. Dallas Stars Keen. Jumps it in. Miranov takes his time for Marchand. His pass broken up. He gets it again. And then just as quickly as it taken away. Here comes Ho. Ho shoots the stars. Oh, a rocket to the top corner. And it's 3-1 Dallas. Benoit Hogue with three goals against Curtis Joseph in overtime in game three and a breakaway tonight and then the Rockets to make it 3-1. Well, watch Benoit Hogue use Greg DeVries as a screen and he won't let Curtis Joseph get set. From here, if you can get your feet set, you're going to make the save. DeVries is the screen and a perfect shot by Hogue. Hogue pulled it wide and Joseph's feet are moving and you can see they're still moving. He's backing in and Joseph trying to look through DeVries. The perfect shot from Benoit Hogue. He has been their best forward tonight. You think of Mike Medano all the time. You think of Joe Neuendijk and even Greg Adam. But Hogue tonight has been their best forward. Some repair work being done on a pane of glass down in the Dallas corner to the left of Eddie Belfour. But Benoit Ho, the overtime hero in game three and a leading candidate for first star selection tonight for the Dallas Stars. I would say so. And Curtis Joseph looks up at the clock and Ho pulled that puck by DeVries and then shot it back the other way. So. Joseph was looking through DeVries' body, trying to pick it up, and in it went. Well, this crowd was really alive in the third period when the Oilers had some chances. Things have quieted considerably with the rocket by Benoit Hogue to make it 3-1. Eight minutes remaining in the third period. Here's Barahowski. The breeze will blast it in. It gets away from Belfour. Garen behind the net, tied up by Hatcher and upended by the Dallas defenseman. Poke pass to Breeze. Along the board, Barahowski is able to recover. Now it's Murray. Playing it in for Garen. Garen winds up a rising shot. It's the glass behind Belfour. Now it's Murray. Looking it back to the net, Marshall 
Moves it softly along the board. Ninema pinches in. It's chopped past him. And then it bounces away from Marchand. And as Marchand drove it in, he had a teammate trapped offside with 7-12 left in the third. Trainer working on him. He has a masseuse every day before practice. Come to his house for an hour to loosen him up. He's had some back problems. And fortunately for the Stars and Eddie, they've been getting better in the last year. Well, he hasn't had many problems in stopping shots in this series. He has played so well in goal for the Dallas Stars, and when you talk to the Dallas players, they all relate to the work that Eddie Belfer has done, not only during the regular season and taking them to a first-place finish, but his playoff performance, first against San Jose and now against Edmonton. Well, there's the trainer, Dave Supernaut, working on Belfour. He's not his masseuse. Eddie has his own masseuse that comes to his house every day before practice, and it makes it a long day, and Eddie usually stays and works on his equipment after practice is done, and the usual things that the NHL players go through every day. Well, the Eagles on the side of his helmet, on the back of his helmet, his racing team is uh, represented. Carmen Racing, Eddie calls it, and... Uh, because of those back problems, he hasn't been driving those race cars for the last couple of years, but he does have a couple of them. Miranoff goes back to the net. Dano plays it up high on the glass over in the far corner. Adams kicks it away from Miranoff. Miranoff tries again. He can't clear. The door shoots. That deflects wide. Behind the net, Adams knocked it down. Adams looks out front for Keane, can't get it there, goes to Sador. Sador shot redirected. Keane got a stick on it to tip it, and Joseph had to come sliding across to make the save. Doug Waits at the line, drops it off for Barahowski. Barahowski couldn't shoot it. Centering attempt, and that's knocked down by Balfour, and the puck is steered out to center ice. Here comes Lynn. He drops it for Carbono. Bumped by Barahowski. Lynn moves in as well. DeVries is also there. And DeVries is able to move it. The Oilers make a change. 5.30 remaining in the third. 3-1 was the score in game one. Dallas. 2-0. Edmonton in game two. The overtime winner by Benoit Hogue in game three. 1-0 Dallas. And it's 3-1 again for the Stars. The face hey, hey, hey. to take a 3-1 lead back to Dallas. And a chance to wrap it up in game five Saturday night. Chambers goes to the corner. The puck comes into the slot area. Dallas with a shot. It's again blocked before it gets to the net. We've talked throughout this series about the great job the Dallas players do of blocking those shots even before they get to Ed Belfort, and they've done more of it tonight. They really have, and it's not just one or two guys. You think Craig Ludwig and Gary and Hatcher, but it's all two. They're able to block shots. This is Verbeek now, working in against Niedemann, and it's offside over on the wing. 434 the time remaining in the third. Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Fans trying to get the Oilers back into it. Uh, Don, we talked about the Oilers shooting from everywhere before this game started. The shots on goal now are 36 to 22 in favor of Dallas. They've been letting the puck go, and especially on their power play. And you think back to the two power plays that Edmonton had here at the start of the third period and could produce nothing and very few chances on those power plays. The pass is behind Hammerlin. Keane is in for checking. Perkis throws it rink wide. Picked up by Marchand. Here he comes in across the line. Throws it towards the net and Balfour catches it. Drops it at the side of the net for Zubov. Keane gets the center. His shoot in is blocked by Hammerlin. Here's an opportunity for Herkus. Herkus trying to move into position. Couldn't get a shot away as it poked out to the neutral zone. Keen knocks down a pass. Now the Stars make a quick change. Here comes Miranoff. Miranoff trying to work through. He's checked by Lynn. The Oilers unable to get anything going. 
in this third period against this very tight checking Dallas team. Langenbrunner trying to work into position. He fires a guy. Miranoff has it. Now he's bucked by Carbonell. In front for Lynn. And there's a whistle with Miranoff down and uh, very slow in getting back up. You talked about the quick changes of the Dallas Stars. They said that was one of the keys to their win in game three was they kept their shifts about 30 seconds. And the Oilers, usually it's about 45 seconds. Here comes Ken Lowe out to attend to Boris Miranov. He was tied up with Guy Carbono. I don't know what happened to him. He was backing into the boards. The Oilers can't afford to lose him. He is in one of their real workhorses. He and Roman Hammerlick. Well, here's the little contact from Carbono, and it might have been a knee-on-knee -knee contact against the board. It wasn't a dirty hit by any stretch of the imagination. Now get a 28-point summer checkup, plus oil, lube, and filter, tire rotation, and a free jug of washer fluid, all for just $29.95, only at Canadian Tire. Well, you talked about Marinoff and what a blow it would be if they lose him for any length of time. In the overtime game, he played 30 minutes and 42 seconds. He's between 25 and 30 minutes most nights. Now you can see Ken Lowe working on his right thigh. And Benoit Hogue, the breakaway goal, and then the blast that has quieted in the crowd here of shooting the Oilers 36 to 22. And Dallas power plays have... They've been a key. Dallas has controlled their power play. They haven't scored a power play goal, but they've controlled, had lots of shots. Whereas the Edmonton Oilers, especially the last two here in the third period where they had a chance when it was 2-1, to produce nothing. Well, Ron Lowe said oh! that the Dallas Stars were a tough team to play against because they play an agitating, checking in your face style, and that has certainly been in evidence tonight. Langenbrunner was looking to center for Lynn. It was intercepted. Here comes Fraser. He's got the only goal for the Oilers. But Lindgren can't do anything. He can't handle the pass. And Lynn takes his time as he comes in across the line. Lynn puts it to the corner. Marshall bumps with Vera Housky. The puck goes straight. Picked up by Lindgren. 2.45 remaining in the third. 3-1 the Dallas Stars leading. Galper plays it up along the board. Chambers having problems trying to get out as he has three Oilers on top of him. Finally, it does come out, and it's flipped in offside by Hamerlick. Well, Boris Miranov is back on the ice with his partner, Roman Hamerlick. He's trying to skate it off. And you wonder whether Boris was trying to draw a penalty on that hit from DiCarbonol. His right leg, the pants are cut a little bit. One of the skates must have made contact. Now, I don't think there was any attempt by Boris to fake it and go down because the, he was in obvious pain as he went off to the bench, and he's still favoring the right leg, but his pants are uh, certainly cut quite badly. <laughs> 229 remaining in the third period. Long pass intended for the beak is broken up. It to the corner. Moves it up along the boards. Curry gets it right wide for Greer. Greer throws it to the net. Dalcor steers it behind the goal for Chambers. Miranov cuts off the clearing attempt. It's picked up in the corner by Greer, but they rule that he threw it ahead. So it's a hand pass from Miranov into the corner for Greer. 156 left on here in the third period. Do you pull Curtis Joseph? Plays up just outside the blue line in a 3-1 game. You're really having problems creating any attack that even strength against these Dallas Stars. Nothing final. The Washington Capitals and Sergei Gonchar with his sixth of the playoffs. The game winner in that one. So far, there's been no indication that Joseph is going to head off to the bench. 156 remaining in the third period. 